Hey everyone, this is Matt at Prep Pros. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to do every single type of complex numbers question on the ACT, and also show you a trick for how your calculator can solve pretty much all of them for you. All right, so for this video, we're gonna use the uh, teaching pages from uh, our soon to be released ACT math book. So first of all, what are complex numbers? Well, complex numbers have these weird eyes in them, which you may or may not have seen before. Um, all you need to know about the I is the I is the same as the square root of negative one. Sometimes in math, you're doing an equation and you get to like x squared is some negative number and that's where the I's come in. We don't really need to understand them too much for most of the I's on the ACT. Now, the first thing we have to know how to do in the ACT is just adding and subtracting complex numbers, which is actually pretty simple. Just treat complex numbers like combining like terms. So when we see these, all you wanna do is put numbers together and put I terms together. So the example here, if we have eight plus five I plus five minus two I, all you do is put the numbers together, eight plus five, eight plus five gives me 13, and then put the i's together, five minus two gives me three. So if you see one of those, it'll be early in the ACT, you go, oh, that's super simple. Just add them together. Now, if you have subtraction, same concept, we have two minus three i minus five minus seven i, so we just wanna make sure that we distribute those terms. So now make sure you distribute the negative to both of these. So it's two and then just numbers again. So two minus five is gonna be negative three. And then negative three i minus negative seven turns into plus seven, which gives us positive four. So again, questions like these are fairly simple and straightforward. Um, and if you want to do a practice one here, you can pause the video and take a look at example number one, see if you can solve it. All of the examples will tell you the answer below that. Now, what we have to do more commonly on the ACT is multiplying complex numbers. And the really important thing with multiplying complex numbers is we're often going to get i squareds. Remember, i was equal to the square root of negative one, which means i squared is going to equal negative one. So if we multiply complex numbers, it's just like multiplying quadrats. You're doing our foiling, which remember is our first, outers, inners, lasts. So if we're doing one like this, where we have three minus five i times two minus two i, we're just doing our foiling. So multiply it out just like you would if you had something that was like x plus one times x minus three. We're doing it the same way. So our firsts, we do three times two gives us six. Our outers, three times negative two i is negative six i. Inners, negative five i and two, it's gonna give us negative 10 i. And lasts, negative five i times negative two i gives me positive 10 i squared. So if we put those terms together, we get six minus 16 i plus 10 i squared. Now this is where it's important to remember that i squared is the same as negative one. So whenever we see an i squared, what we wanna do is you wanna replace that with negative one, as we can see we've done right here. So it turns into 10 times negative one instead of i squared, which becomes negative 10. So we have six minus 16 i minus 10 so now I have to put these numbers together, and what I end up getting, six minus 10 is negative four minus 16i. So whenever you multiply complex numbers together, you should always get another complex number. We'll go over one exception to that when you just get a whole real number in a second. So again, if you wanna do practice, take a pause here and look at example two, see if you can solve that one out. And you'll see the answer down below again. Now, something that's a little more advanced we can see, usually more towards um, the back of the test, a little bit later with imaginary numbers, is something called the complex conjugate. And all complex numbers have what's called a complex conjugate. So as an example, a plus bi and a minus bi are complex conjugates. Or if we do numbers, because it's a little easier to understand, two plus three i, two minus three i are complex conjugates. The complex conjugates always basically just switch the sign. So you have the same values of the a and the b, or here the two and the three, you just switch the middle sign from plus to minus. Now the only reason we have complex conjugates here and we will use them is with fractions because the product of any imaginary number and its complex conjugate is a real number. The reason that works out is that the middle terms are gonna cancel when we do our foiling. So here, a plus bi times a minus bi is just a squared plus b squared. So in terms of numbers, if we just go through an example, let's say we have our two plus three i and two minus three i. If we do our foiling, we get four. So we put a four right here. Outer terms is minus six i, inner terms is plus six i, and our lasts are our nine i squared. 
So our plus six i and our minus six i in the middle cancel. And all we're left with is four minus nine i squared. Remember, i squared is the same as negative one. So we're gonna replace that with negative one and we get four minus nine times negative one turns into plus and we get a value of 13. And this makes sense because 13 is equal to our two squared plus our three squared, which of course is four plus nine equals 13. So if you knew our equation that we talked about above, you could have gotten to 13 way faster than if you had to actually do the math out. So again, complex conjugates are the only time when you multiply complex numbers that you're gonna get just a number with no i's in there. The reason complex conjugates are important algebraically is if they give you a question, let's say like example three below, where they give you a fraction and you have to pick which one is identical, anytime we see a fraction in the bottom of an imaginary or a complex number, you're not allowed to have i's in the denominator, in the bottom of the fraction. Just like so you're not allowed to have square roots. So if we have one like this up top, 10 times i minus 2i, what we want to multiply is you want to multiply the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate. And again, this is going to be our more advanced example. You'll only see this way towards the back of the HT, probably somewhere in those last 10 or so questions. So what we're going to do here is what's going to happen, remember, if we multiply these together, it's just going to be equal to a squared plus b squared. Or here it's going to be 1 squared plus 2 squared, so those middle terms are going to cancel. So the bottom of our fraction is just going to be 5, and the top is just going to be 10 times 1 plus 2i, which would be 10 plus 20i. From here, our trick is we can split this. So 10 plus 20i over 5 is the same as 10 over 5 plus 20i over 5. 10 over 5 is the same as 2. 20 over 5 simplifies to 4. So our answer here would be 2 plus 4i. So that's how we do it algebraically. Again, if you want to take a try of a really hard question, you can try number 3 down here as well. Now, let's get to our tip, which is, as it says right here, use your calculator. So, if you have a fancy graphing calculator, I have my old TI-83 here, but if you have a TI-83, TI-84, TI-Inspire, some of the scientific ones have I buttons as well, some of them do not, but if you have it, there's an I button basically right here next to the decimal point. So it's right above the decimal point on TI uh, calculators. Uh, if you have an older calculator, you can check under like the math button if you have it, or just go online and see if you have it. But if you have it, all that math we just did, you can enter into your calculator and hit enter and it will spit the answer out. So if you were doing our addition questions, those are pretty easy to put in your calculator. But if you're doing like multiplication questions or if you're doing even a question like number three, you could enter this straight into the calculator. The only trick with number three is you then have to click math on your calculator once you enter it. So it'll give you weird numbers. You click math and then on the very top, you might not be able to see this, but number one there says frac for fraction. That will turn it to a fraction. So if you want to try, if you have one of the calculators, you could actually try number three and just punch this in your calculator, click that math button, click frac, which will turn it to a fraction, and then your calculator will literally show you, oh, that's the answer. So it's kind of a cheat code if you have it. If you don't, that's where you have to do a little more studying here and really understand. So that's pretty much all we're going to have to know for 95% of ACTs. Now there are a couple of the topics we'll talk about just because they've been on some tests in the past, and just in case you guys know them, but the rest of this video is really for my uh, my students who are going for super high scores or really want to make sure they know every possible thing on the ACT. Now the next one we may see is powers of i. This one's actually not quite as obscure, so this is good to know just in case, but there can be higher powers. So i follows this pattern. i to the first is i, i squared is negative one, i cubed is negative i, i to the fourth is one, and then it repeats. i to the fifth is going to be i, i to the sixth is negative one, i to the seventh is negative i, negative i, and i to the eighth is one. And this repeats over and over and over again. So if it ever asks you something like, oh, what does i to the 45th equal? We could actually solve this question pretty easily using the fact the pattern repeats. The way to do it is the pattern repeats every four. So every time we have i to a multiple of four, 
it's going to equal 1. So i to the 4th is 1, i to the 8th is 1, i to the 12th is 1, i to the 40th is 1. So every multiple of 4 is 1. So all we need to do is look for a multiple of 4 near the value we're looking for. Here, i to the 44 is a multiple of 4, which means that's equal to 1. So we can just use our pattern. And the pattern after 1, it goes back to i again. So we can know i to the 45th would just be i. Now, that come up on the test decently occasionally. I mean, it's not super common, but it has been there recently. The other rest of the stuff here in this video is going to be where you're going to see it less commonly. But again, it's fair game, so good to know, especially if you're shooting for very high scores in ACT. So the next thing here is called the complex plane. The complex plane is basically graphing complex numbers. And any complex number A plus BI will be graphed on the complex plane at the point A, B. That's because A, the real value, like the number, is our like x-axis, and the imaginary portion is our y-axis. So if we have the point here, like say 3 plus 4i on the graph, that's going to be over 3 and then up at positive 4. It's almost like this is at the point 3 comma 4. Same with if I had negative 1, 2, it's like at the coordinate negative 1, positive 2 on the complex plane. So they've occasionally asked, very rarely asked questions about the complex plane, but it's been there before, so that's the main stuff we have to understand. If you kind of understand where it's graphed or how to draw it out, you'll probably be able to solve the questions. And again, if this does appear, it'll be somewhere towards the back of the test in those last 15 or so questions. So again, if you want to try one, you can pause it and take example four. Now, the other stuff we have to know that, again, is super rare, but just in case, is the absolute value of a complex number. The absolute value is the distance from zero normally. With a complex number, it's the distance from the origin. So to find the absolute value, we just do the absolute value is basically the square root of a squared plus b squared. So if we use an example of an absolute value of 3 plus 4i, it'd be over 3 and plus 4. You can use our equation right here and find that the value is going to be 5, because the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared is 5. You could also think all we're doing is finding the distance from the origin. So if it's over 3 and it's up 4, the hypotenuse there would be 5. And that's all that the absolute value of a complex number is asking you to do, is just find that distance. All right, now, the final thing you can see on the test is going to be the distance between complex numbers. Again, super rare topic, but just in case, the distance is just the distance on the complex plane. So all we're doing is basically using this distance formula. So if we have two complex numbers, a plus bi, c plus di, it's the square root of a minus c squared plus b minus d squared. So it's just using the distance form, just like you use in a geometry to find the distance between two points. So if I had complex numbers 2 plus 4i and negative 3 plus i, the distance formula is, well, we're going to use our 2 minus negative 3, and then square that, and then just 4 minus 1. You don't include the i's when you're doing the distance formula. Square that. It gives us 5 squared plus 3 squared, which ends up being the square root of 34. You could also solve this by just drawing it out, as we do down here. If we put our points on, you can just kind of count squares. So we're going over a distance of 5, up a distance of 3. You can kind of see now, oh, we're just doing the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals our c squared. So you can find that value, again, just using Pythagorean theorem, the exact same thing. So if you want to do practice, you can take a pause and look at number 6. Uh, beyond that, that is going to cover pretty much everything you need to know for complex numbers on the ACT. We hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please like the video. If there's more topics you'd like us to cover in a future video, let us know in the comments below. Also, follow our channel for lots more SAT and ACT-related content.